Hi everyone, I'm Monty Hernandez, a program manager on Xbox Cloud Gaming, working with game studios to bring their game to cloud. And I'm Sean Farkas, and I'm a developer on Xbox Cloud Gaming. I work with developers and studios to help optimize their game for Xbox game streaming. Today we're going to have a discussion with Double Fine Productions about their experience optimizing Psychonauts 2 to run on Xbox game streaming. But before we bring in the team from Double Fine, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about where Xbox game streaming is today and the experience we are seeing our players have with cloud-optimized games. So we launched Xbox Cloud Gaming into preview in October of 2019. And currently, after our most recent launches in Australia, Brazil, Japan, and Mexico, we are now available in 26 markets worldwide. And we're continuing to bring Xbox Cloud Gaming to more markets and even more devices. We initially launched on Android, and since then, we've expanded to a number of devices that you can stream your games to. This includes web browsers at xbox.com slash play. This enables players to play from a variety of form factors, from their desktop PC to their iOS devices when they're on the go. Recently, we've even enabled streaming directly to your home Xbox console. This enables players to try out the latest releases on Xbox Game Pass without having to download the title, but instead stream it. And as a result, players can jump in and play a game quickly. This capability also allows players on Xbox One consoles to stream Xbox Series titles, such as Microsoft's Flight Simulator, which just launched last month, which would have previously been unavailable to play on that console in the past. Our game library has also grown substantially since launch. We started out with four games on our initial service, and today we have over 300 games that are streaming in our catalog. What's even better is that over 100 of those games have done some type of cloud optimization. We've learned a lot along our journey, and we've seen that we are able to reach players who are only streaming and don't own consoles. And those players who don't have controllers are still able to interact with our games because of the optimizations that some of these games have made. Sean is going to take us through those insights for those games that have optimized, that are optimized for cloud. Yeah, thanks, Monty. So let's talk about those 100 optimized games for a second. But before we do that, we should just say that Xbox game streaming it's powered by effectively what are just Xboxes in our Azure data centers. So your Xbox game is typically going to run without any modification at all. When it's streaming, it has no idea that it's sitting in a data center instead of someone's living room. But these 100 plus cloud optimized games, they took an extra step. They decided to provide an enhanced streaming experience. And they see a big benefit from this on Xbox game streaming. Across the service, we see that 20% of streaming players exclusively use touch controls when they stream their game. And that means that simply by building a set of touch controls, which as we'll talk about can vary from actually no code changes at all to something much more substantial, uh, where you can build native touch right into your game, it makes the title uh, available to a much larger portion of players than if it didn't have touch availability at all. And that helps explain why we see that titles with cloud enhancements both touch controls and other enhancements we'll talk about in a minute, it's just scaling your UI, they see more than a 2x increase in gameplay time across the service. And that's across all genres of game. Even further, these titles consistently rate better with our players than the titles that don't have any cloud enhancements available. And when we say cloud enhancements, what do we mean? Well, there's a lot of different things you can do. For example, you can adjust the UI and text in your screen or in your game to match the screen your player's on. One example of this is Minecraft Dungeons, where they have larger sets of buttons in their menus for players to interact with when they're on a smaller device. You can do things like measure the current latency of the game stream or even detect what data center you're in and react to that. Now, for example, uh, Gears 5, they measure their current latency and they adjust the active reload window of the game in response to that latency to make the reload mechanic seem fair to players. Of course, one of the most impactful changes you can make is to add those touch controls to your game. In Xbox Game Streaming, we support two different types of touch controls. Touch points can go directly into your game engine to react natively. For instance, Football Manager 2022 interprets touch gestures directly in the game engine and is operated on entirely with touch. Alternatively, however, Xbox Game Streaming supports a technology called the Touch Adaptation Kit, which enables you to describe a touch overlay to be rendered by the game streaming app. And that overlay is entirely described by your studio for your game. You describe what touch controls you want, 
where they should be on the screen, what they should look like, and importantly, what gamepad inputs they should map back to. And we'll render those touch controls in the game streaming app, interpret the touches ourselves, and convert them back to those gamepad inputs. So what this means for you is that your game doesn't have to build a touch input system. As far as it can tell, it's being played with a gamepad. Your game doesn't have to build a touch input rendering system. The game streaming app is doing that for it. And this is the technology that Double Fine Productions chose to use when they built the touch controls for Psychonauts 2. Today, we're going to be talking with them about their experience using the touch adaptation kit. We're talking with Double Fine Productions about their journey of bringing Psychonauts 2 to the cloud and some of the cloud optimizations that they made for their game. So with that, I'd like to introduce our guests today, Seth Forrester, Chad Dawson, and Victor Romero from Double Fine Productions. Welcome. Hey guys. Hey guys. So my first question is for you, Chad. What reasons did you consider for bringing Psychonauts 2 to Xbox Cloud Gaming? Well, Psychonauts 2 was released uh, last fall, and we initially developed it for console and PC. But with the release around the time of the xCloud browser, we were excited about reaching a wider audience with uh, custom touch controls. In addition, the ability for players to just jump right in the game without having to wait for a long download time was, was, uh, was very compelling. What do you think, Vic? Well, you know, streaming content has certainly become so integral to the business of entertainment, uh, certainly music and video. I think in video games, we're in that transition as well now. So it's only natural that as the internet uh, becomes more reliable uh, and faster for, for our customers and players, uh, they're just going to realize, they're going to weigh 100 gig downloads versus instant streaming option. And I think it'll just become more and more natural for them to, to gravitate toward that. We've seen that this game has high sentiment and really positive player feedback. Chad, why do you think it plays so well on cloud? Well, um, the game has very nice uh, controls that uh, are low latency. Um, you can jump and not miss a jump, even if you get a little bit of lag. In addition, it's a very vibrant game. The colors are are very bright, so for mobile devices, it looks it looks very good under low lighting and stuff like that. And with the game being available on even more platforms and devices, how do you think about playing? How do you think about it playing across devices like Android phones and iOS devices, which it really originally wasn't intended for? That's an interesting, Monty, because you know Double Fine had been a mobile game developer going back to 2012. So it really is embedded as part of the studio's history as a developer. Uh, but now that we have uh, xCloud uh, cloud gaming, uh, it gives us more opp opportunities to reach players who maybe aren't on console and PC. Uh, looking at you, Gen Z, you know, it's just becoming more natural for people to stick to their mobile devices and streaming uh, as their option for playing video games. And when Psychonauts 2 launched, it had a simpler set of touch controls than it has today. And part of that was because we started talking to you about that really late in the production cycle. So what was your goal of being able to add touch controls so late in the, in the production cycle, uh, Chad? And how are you able to ship and get that out day and date? Well, initially, adding the touch controls was pretty minimal, almost no work on our part to get the basic controls in there. Uh, but we quickly decided that the game would be much more enhanced if we could show custom controls and optimize it for that, for players who weren't, didn't have a controller. Now, in later updates, of course, you added multiple different layouts. You've got... Uh, one that's for gameplay and one for cinematics. And Seth, what was your thought process when you designed these different layouts? How did you integrate all of this into the game itself? Well, we had developed a, a pretty good uh, set of iconography that that uh, conveyed whatever power or uh, action you wanted to play. And so it was easier for us to convert that into button prompts that players needed in order to, to, to use during gameplay. But it was also really important that during cinematics, we cut that, uh, that UI out and only show uh, the cinematics to uh, keep the players really engaged. And then we bring back that HUD during gameplay. Yeah. Psychonauts 2 has really such a distinct visual style. And your touch controls fit in really well with that, which helps you feel like an immersive experience for your players. How are you able to design the artwork that makes the controls fit in so well with your game? Well, we were we were really um, we had a, such a good body of of artwork for the the UI that we were able to really convert a lot of that artwork and make it work for uh, the necessary buttons that were in the game. One of the challenges you frequently have with custom artwork is that the game might prompt the player to press a certain uh, input button uh, at points during the game. And now you've customized that the way that the, the buttons look. So, uh, Chad, how were you able to approach the problem of making sure that the players could respond to in-game prompts reasonably well while they were still having this custom artwork on their touch controls? 
that's a really good question from an accessibility standpoint. You want players to be able to find the button when you prompt them for it. Uh, providing the controller button art as part of the image, if you notice in our overlay, we place the Y button prompt image over the pointing hand controller image for interaction. And that way, when the tutorial says to press the Y button, the player can still find the right xCloud touch button to press. Now, Vic, I'm curious about how you work with cloud gaming internally in the studio. How do you get up to set up and test how the, your game is working while it's streaming? And how do you verify that your, your game is playing well as your players would like to play uh, with the touch controls? Well, what's great there is, you know, testers have the option to stream from their dev kit to a PC that's been, been configured for testing uh, through the uh, browser-based uh, test tool. So really all it takes there is, uh, you know, as we have all seen, anyone familiar with the dev kit has seen the big streaming option on there. And thanks to your team, we now re know as well that there's a browser-based test tool that once it's configured with the proper sandbox and test accounts, it's quite simple to stream from the kit to that browser and use the mouse as to simulate touch control. And then at that point, all you do is use the touch adaptation kit or TAC tool to sideload a layout file. And then at that point, testers can verify both that it looks good and functions as expected. And if it doesn't function as expected, you know, we now have the option to very quickly report back to engineering and UI so they can make their changes and then give us a new build as quickly as possible. So Seth, how does this process and what you've learned set you up to build immersive cloud experiences in future Double Fine projects? We, we really built out quite a, uh, a set of uh, templates based on this. So now, uh, moving forward with any other game that we develop, we're able to use those templates easily and, and integrate them into any other uh, plays, uh, games that we want to integrate into xCloud. Great. And my last question is for you, Chad. What feedback and recommendations do you have for other developers who are listening to us today and are considering building their own cloud experiences? I'd say get, get started on it early. Uh, start thinking about how your touch uh, controls are going to fit in with your UI. You wouldn't want the touch controls covering up but, you know, something like subtitles in your UI, so starting that early will help you plan for that. Think about the different touch modes that you might have in UI states. And then also think about how your game performs under latency. There are optimizations you can do as well to, to make that a better enjoyable experience for the player as well. If you want to try out anything that we talked about today, you can go to xbox.com slash play and try out Psychonauts 2 for yourself. And hopefully that really inspires you to want to uh, do some of these optimizations in your own games. You'll find a bunch of resources at the link on this slide. That include information about how to get your dev kit set up so that it can act as a streaming server, how to obtain the, uh, the tools to connect to that dev kit and try out your game, and first starting steps for building your own touch layouts, for putting native touch into your game, for accessing our APIs to tell you if you are streaming when you started and stopped, what your current latency is, or what the size of the screen is that you're currently streaming to. And you'll find plenty of other examples on xbox.com slash play of games that are using these APIs to sort of give you inspiration for maybe what you might want to do with your game as well. Thanks. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your X-Fest. Thanks for watching. <laughs>